Hello everyone, this is Thursday Live Lessons with yours truly, Aldrin Guerrero, joined by Mr. Aaron, the voice not more. So what's up, Aaron? What's up? Mr. Kahai, the legend for against it. What's up, Kahai? What's up? And Aaron is uh, is in front of the camera once again, and you know what that means? That means challenge is uh, is over. Challenge for uh, Thursday Live Lessons is over. Songwriting challenge is done. What is Thursday Live Lesson, you may ask? Me. What is the challenge? I'll explain both of you right now. Thursday Live Lessons, this is the show where you basically ask us whatever you want, ukulele related, you know, and um, we'll try to come up with the best uh, the best possible answer that the three of us can come up with. Um, you know, we, uh, we kind of just talk, like talk ukulele, and this is available via video over at UU Plus, but um, if you're listening to this on your favorite device to listen to podcasts, this is in podcast form as well. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, what is the challenge? So the challenge is um, we basically do a songwriting challenge every every two weeks. So two weeks is the uh, you know is the due date. We kind of do a um, chords and, uh, and and chord pattern and whatnot. You got to use these you know use this chord. This I think last time was a chord pattern. We did mm-hmm. chords before. This time it's a chord pattern. It's gonna be really interesting. So throughout the show, we'll be um, you know hearing the songs that uh, the three of us wrote. Kahai, myself, and Aaron wrote songs with the uh, you know with the format that we'll explain later. But right now, let's get to that first part, which uh, we answer basically any and all of your questions. So Kahai over here will give us a question. We'll discuss and try to come up with the best answer. So Kahai, go ahead. So uh, Hira asked on like the uh, one of the one hundred lessons. Uh huh. Um, I was wondering if you have tips for upstrumming uh, during the eight notes in a measure. Mm-hmm. So uh, eight notes, right? Uh, okay. Or uh, and then it went on to say, I tend to get my fingers stuck inside the strings, mm. at least one of them every time, and that doesn't make up for a very pleasing sound. Okay. So um, one of the factors that might be causing a, you know your finger getting stuck on the uh, stuck on the strings is if you're strumming right here where the sound hole is. So if you're strumming right here where the sound hole is, your your finger can get caught, you know, if you're uh, if you're in it kind of deep, right? But um, I think in ukulele 100, we kind of instruct you to strum right here where the um, you know where the neck meets the body, and there's a little bit of the neck right on top of that. Because what you do is, no matter how deep you know you uh, you put your pointer finger in there, you're not gonna you know you're not gonna get stuck, right? And another thing too is to get this kind of curve on your oh right here, uh, on your pointer finger. So don't make your pointer finger so you know so straight that if you're doing this and you're getting stuck you know on your uh, on your strum. So what you do is you take this straight pointer finger, and you curve it just a little bit like this. Just relax. It. Yes, relax yeah. it. Yeah, I can just relax it. So you know. It takes effort to like straighten out your pointer finger, but in order to relax it, that's kind of where you want to strum. And on that note, you just want to relax the rest of your, you know, rest rest of your hands. So it, it might even look like this. So whenever I'm strumming, it looks like you know I'm pointing straight at it, but it's actually at an angle. So if we if we look at my hand this way, like this, it's not straight like this. It's like a little bit curved. So in that tutorial in ukulele 100, we uh, we teach you to kind of hold it from where the um, where the forearm is, and then point to, or sorry point to this part of your uh, of your ukulele where you're going to be strumming, and then put your forearm down, and it's already going to kind of cause this natural curve on your pointer finger if you just do that. Once again, take your pointer finger, plant it on where you want to strum the sweet spot on the strumming uh, ukulele strumming. So take your forearm, it goes down here. And that's kind of the natural, you know, way to uh, play you. So what's going to happen is when you strum down, you're going to hit it with your, um, you know, you're going to curve this pointer finger a little bit. See that? So I'm going from here, and then it's going to go down. And that's where the twist of the wrist that we talked about. So it's going to twist up, twist down, down. Okay. So the combination of this part of my uh, of my nails so he's gonna hit the nail right and that's what's gonna what that's what you're gonna use to kind of glide through the strings so if I were to do that slow my nails kind of glide through the strings going uh, going down now your thing is on on the up so on the up I just go back up use the same thing like this now the other side of my uh, my nail it's gonna hit so I'll show you two from this angle like right here yep oh, my thumb Get my thumb out of there so it's going here this way. So it's this part of your nail that's going to be um, 
hitting the up strums. Down, up, down, up. Nice and relaxed. I just do this so that you guys can see my pointer finger, but for the most part, whenever I'm strumming, it's kind of all relaxed like this. So it looks like I'm doing this really fancy, like flourishing kind of strum, but it's actually just that pointer finger going down, up, down, up on the strings, hitting the side of my pointer finger, using that nail to glide through those strings. Because if you're using your flesh and you're kind of doing this, or you're even pointing this way, it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna make that same sound, so I'm gonna slide through, and you're gonna have a harder time um, getting those, uh, getting those strums down and getting them consistent because um it's kind of part of the consistency just let it go so that your your hand can just naturally create that rhythm with your wrist all right what do you think yeah i think i mean if you're feeling the strings hit any part of your finger that's not really like just the tip, tip area mm -hmm. then that's probably you know you're, yeah you're either kind of digging too too hard or you're mm -hmm. twisting in a weird way because I was, mm. I was kind of trying to, to do it like left-handed mm. mm. and I, oh, I, true. Yeah, I'll yeah, get yeah. stuck too mm. like you know using your mm. non-dominant hand you kind of get get yeah. stuck but it's just a matter of kind of fine-tuning that oh, that's, yeah yeah so it's more you got to make sure that your fingers are placed kind of correctly mm. Mm. and then just kind of like graze it really graze it with the tip and then it's more like the, that twisting motion so if you if you really like look at your I guess uh, this part of your your um, thumb so there's there's kind of the tip tip of your thumb the middle part of your thumb and then the base of your thumb where your um, I guess your palm is yeah mm. so kind of like look at those points of reference and then it really is kind of just like a up down mm. up down oh. yeah, yeah so so if you if you kind of so from yeah, here so to your there, your yeah. forearm is not moving at all, basically, mm. and it's basically just kind of like, like you know, you're mm. seeing kind of the little bit underside of mm. your palm side of your so thumb. thumb part, and then you, the top of it. Nice. The and you know the under part. Yeah. yeah. So that's all you're doing is mm. kind of twisting really gently, mm. Mm. and that's enough to cover your strings, where your pointer finger is at the top of the strings, mm. and then at the bottom of the strings. Yeah. And all you're doing is kind of twisting your wrist. And that's mm -hmm. all it is. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of just make sure everything else is stationary, yeah, and then kind of like only you're only moving your thumb basically up mm -hmm. or down by twisting your wrist. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're looking at it, mm -hmm. then um, I think you should be fine. You shouldn't really get that mm -hmm. kind of digging in. Yeah, because yeah. I was really kind of trying to trying, deconstruct trying. it for myself. <laughs> so would you would you say that like a good practice? So you know, based on that. A good yeah. practice would be just kind of like um like tap you know tap on something like this. yeah I guess you so could you can kind of get with your, that you know that rhythm down yeah because even though you're not using your your pointer finger you, you're kind of getting this movement get them, right yeah, yeah. so you yeah. have to kind of get that move. nice nice I've never so, yeah. thought of it so that just way just kind of like hold yeah. your ukulele like you would hold yeah. it and then kind of tap your thumb just on the top mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. um just to get that movement and mm -hmm. then try to translate that to what you're doing with your strumming you're mm -hmm. not moving your entire arm you're not. Yeah. You're not twisting in a weird way mm. that you would get your finger caught. Yeah. It's more it's just, just like, thumb. yeah, your mm. thumb just gent gently mm. kind of like moving. Yeah. And I, if you look straight down at it, it's mm. just like moving away from you and towards you. And that's... Yeah. It, I'm going to steal that really, and put it on my website. <laughs> really, really simple movement. So, yeah, in the, in the next year, mm. um, we're... Yeah, we're really gonna. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll kind of see. On on January first, uh, we're gonna put out like um, it's not really a lesson. Mm. It's but it um, is. It's, we'll, we'll do it's a, a lesson. We gotta play along mm -hmm. and then kind of step by step how to mm -hmm. do it, and it's it's kind of a, an intermediate song, so it's mm -hmm. not the easiest song, but we'll do some um, more simple yeah. versions of it, and then you can get strumming down yeah. like pretty easily if you're a brand new player. Yeah. It'll really help you kind but, of I mean, intuitively learn how to strum. We've been kind of like like saying in the office that like nothing awesome should be like you know like easy. It should be intuitive. Yeah. It should be a challenge. It should be hard. Yeah. You know you're challenging yourself, and that's why it's awesome. You know if it's just like something that you could learn. Yeah. And like you know. So like, the way that it's going to be set up is like mm. you, um, no matter what level you're at, you can mm. progress to that using the same mm -hmm, song. Mm -hmm. So if you're a beginner. Just do step one, yeah. and then you're good. Yeah, and or, you, can, you, know, you can still play that song. Yeah, and you can still yeah. play along that's, with the that's song. That's kind of the beauty so. of it. 
and you know we've been kind of hyping it up for the past like months maybe like you know we're just saying yeah, things are gonna, gonna change, change some and, and it is but... it's gonna change drastically so watch out for the changes but if you hang on if you stick with us for this this crazy ride that we're gonna go it's gonna be well worth your time and i feel like that's we're really like, getting down to business of like you know making people better musicians yeah mm -hmm. like uh like i think some people are gonna try it once right and mm -hmm. be like this is too hard i didn't get it on my first time <laughs> And it's like, oh, you gotta stick around though. Stick yeah. around, like just keep. Uh, that's mm -hmm. that's where you grow is like mm -hmm. when you you keep doing something over mm -hmm. and over and over. It's yeah, like I I don't even remember like when I was uh, when I was first learning how to play and stuff. I don't even remember like me learning a good song in like a day. You know, <laughs> maybe not even like a week. Like if I'm learning a picking or whatever to a song. It's gonna take me like a couple weeks was, to to kind of get down. Yeah. I was talking to Ryan about mm -hmm. how there's like still songs that when I started learning guitar, like I wanted to learn those songs, and I still work on them like <laughs> even now. And I've been years playing later. I've been playing guitar for like 10, 11 years maybe. You know, mm -hmm. since I was like fourteen, mm -hmm. really seriously playing. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, like I'll come back to those songs every once mm -hmm. in a while and be like. Oh, this picking is a little bit easier, mm -hmm. and I get to like you know a crazy solo. I'm like, yeah, no, not <laughs> not, not yet. there yet, not not yet. Yeah. You gotta like still work on some other stuff, and then mm -hmm. I like I go away, mm -hmm. and uh, we we're like using the analogy that it's like climbing a mountain, right? So if that like that hard song is like a huge mountain, it's like the peak of a mountain, yeah, yeah, that you're well, looking at all it, the time, and playing that song perfectly is yeah. that peak of the mountain. What I do is like I just climb like little side hills, right? <laughs> and be like, "Oh, this song is like really fun, and it's like mm -hmm. a little side hill." Mm -hmm. And I climb this other song, and I, you know, yeah. you keep doing that, and then it, it at the same time it builds your other skill sets, like yeah, definitely, yeah. like. Mm -hmm. So you're getting closer. You're not at the peak, mm -hmm. but you're you're getting closer, and you're you're working your way, yeah. and you're having and I, fun and seeing the vistas. <laughs> I think, and I think, unfortunately, like that's where people kind of like drop off, right? Is because they say like. I need to get to the top of the mountain. Like that now, is today. Yeah, yeah. That is my There's so much other things to do. Or, or like <laughs> that is the only thing I want to yeah. do. The only song I want to learn is yeah. this one song, right? Mm. And they don't look around them and see like, oh, what is other fun songs that maybe I didn't <laughs> yeah. even know about yeah. or consider? Mm -hmm. So it's 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 tough. Like I I definitely know the feeling of wanting to mm. get a song, but at the same time, it's like there is so much music out there, so much good music yeah. that. Mm. Uh, you, you know, even yeah, if you're, yourself. yeah, even if you're picky, if you're like mm -hmm. super picky about a certain genre, it's like there has to be a song out there for you to yeah. learn, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. uh, or something similar, so, or something. yeah, simpler yeah. songs along the way that you can have fun with, like you know, <laughs> yeah, pretty quickly. So I mean, you know, hang hang on and enjoy the ride, basically. What it and the thing is, it's not all gonna be like. Like, oh, on, now we want you guys to work. We'll have a lot of fun stuff, too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that we're, we're excited for the fun stuff and we're excited for the hard stuff as well because it's it's going to be... I, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, like, Mark put huh. inside of, like, the forum, he mm -hmm. posted a video and he said, like, uh, oh, it was, like, how to write anime theme songs, yeah, like yeah. a video <laughs> called that. Mm -hmm. And then I was... I, I just responded back to him mm -hmm. and I said, like, the cool thing about like these song challenges mm -hmm. is that it forces me to do things that I'm like not good at. Mm -hmm. So like last week there was I had drums in it, yeah. you know, like drums with the uh, my little like eight bit punk song, mm -hmm. and I'm not a drummer, so like mm -hmm. I don't intrinsic like I don't get mm -hmm. rhythm like rhythm like that, right? Yeah. So I have to really think it out. I have to like I or I even like press record with a microphone and I just like kind of tap out a rhythm like. Yeah. Dun, 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 and I have to like recreate that when I I pick like the drum sounds, you know, yeah, like yeah. I have to think of it that way, and then like it's it even now like I I kind of like listen to that song, I'm like I wish I had my friend who's a drummer or I had a drummer like look at it or try and figure out something. But did you sequence it or did you like play it like using your piano? Uh, I sequence like I mm -hmm. I just wrote it into like a MIDI mm -hmm. track, you know, and kind of put it there, but. It's just like I wish I know like a drummer can think of it differently and think yeah, of the rhythms, yeah. but like I'm like ah, but I I got it done at least like <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sounded good man yeah, yeah. It, yeah. And but it, I see what you mean there, there's definitely a lot of like advantages to getting somebody that like that knows what they're doing and will like fill in those you know parts that 
like mm-hmm. where you didn't think like oh i didn't think about doing that kind of rhythm there or, you, like not even just like fills and stuff but just little you know little things like uh when do i when do i hit the hi-hat or like you know versus yeah. when i hit the ride you know it's like it, it creates a different mood yeah mm-hmm. and we we've, we've kind of talked about that before like that's the mm-hmm. cool thing about playing in a group yeah is because you have not just you but yeah. other people mm-hmm. kind of adding in and mm-hmm. and when when the song comes together yeah. It's much better than uh, if you just did all the yeah, parts. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like it's they can because everybody puts yeah. their own personality mm-hmm, in, mm-hmm. into their instrumentation. Yeah. And that's what makes like the the really 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 good groups yeah, really good. Yeah. Yeah, like, and so that's kind of yeah. what we want people to to like you know, if you're learning ukulele to play mm-hmm. ukulele, part of that um mm-hmm. excitement of being able to play, like mm-hmm. getting to the point mm-hmm. where you can mm-hmm. play is being able to play with other people. Yeah. You know, and and once you get to that point where you're kind of good enough to just hang and and add your voice to the mm-hmm. group, yeah. Then you get to experience the magic of that group dynamic, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, it's always fun to make music by yourself, but like when you, you know, when you create something. Yeah, like, or like even that, if like, even if it's like an mm-hmm. impromptu thing mm-hmm. where some people just got together mm-hmm. and like, oh, just mm-hmm. play this. Right. And then somebody starts mm-hmm. adding their, their thing into <laughs> right. it and it's then like, somebody else and you, it's you like get cooking. to experience that. Yeah. Right? You know, like carrots taste pretty good by themselves. Like, <laughs> taste pretty good by themselves. Like, but when you add these but things, it, you know. All like, together, yeah, all together like, oh, something there's, there's better stew. than yeah. just <laughs> eating them individually. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. like carrots. I, like, yeah. I'm sick and tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know there's, there's also people who say like, oh, I, mm. I'll just look at the lesson or mm. I just want to learn from lessons, right? Like yeah. that's what they... They think is like the limitation to learning mm-hmm. music is from lessons, but it, it's like the same thing. If you can like jump into like other people playing right mm-hmm. and just start playing, it's fun too to listen to a song and be like, "Oh, I know this! Like I know these chords, or I can I can hear what's ha- happening, mm-hmm. and I can play." And it kind of it's that same feeling of just it's like naturally fitting into the song, right? Yeah. And you can yeah. it's like, "Oh, I don't need to." Mm-hmm count the rhythm like i don't need to go one I just two feel three four yeah. one two yeah. three you can just like oh yeah i got like i mm-hmm. i that's i don't know like that's kind of why it's like crazy like when people go like what's the strumming pattern right yeah because it's like oh it's uh, i guess we can like take mm-hmm. more time to think about it yeah. but uh, like also it it should be something that i don't know eventually you yeah. just kind of like hear it and you're like Oh well, I don't know exactly what it is, but yeah. this fits, right? Like yeah. this yeah. this sounds close enough as or this it, sounds you on fit time. into in there. Yeah. the song itself and don't take away from it. Yeah, I mean like you ask any kind of old school like uh player and stuff, you ask some of the best musicians in the world, you know, like you go up to like Paul McCartney, you're like, Oh, what is the strumming pattern to this song? <laughs> what are you even talking like, what are you talking about? Like strumming pattern. Or can you can you imagine going up to Eric Clapton and going like <laughs> I love I love Wonderful Tonight. Can you give me the tabs to Wonderful Tonight? <laughs> and it's like, oh. Well, you'll at least know what tabs are and stuff, you know? Yeah. But yeah. like, Eric Clapton, if you're like, oh, what is the strumming pattern to Wonderful Tonight? Like, what? <laughs> You'd really have to think. Yeah, you'd like, be like, yeah. or, what's like what, what? Tell me what a strumming pattern is first. Because I think I have an idea. I but, can yeah. kind of <laughs> or even like backtrack. Mm-hmm. And, even know. if you like go to his concert, right? And you watch him play like a solo or improv. Mm-hmm. And then after the show, you're like, Oh Eric, I love that improv. Can you like <laughs> break it down and show it to me? Yeah. It's like, uh, I get, yeah, yeah. Wh- what? <laughs> it was like yeah. that. That you would probably because it <laughs> it's, it's yeah, I, I, it's music uh, or like it's, it's hard because I I understand why people want that mm. visual kind of thing, mm. mm-hmm. like stimulus because mm. like people are visual learners, mm. but music is like such a auditory thing. It's like you would hopefully yeah. try to build that mm-hmm. muscle up right yeah. like yeah. listening and learning through listening too it's, yeah yeah and there's so many so many levels mm-hmm. to experiencing music and playing music mm-hmm. but i mean strumming patterns played a role you know like in the past 10 years of like getting yeah. getting ukuleles to the hands of people i think you know just mm-hmm. to making it more accessible and more easy but you know at this at this point like I think 10 years has gone by it's become kind of a norm in the beginner community that like like, give me you know give me what is it like give me so that i can just like give me the key so i can just open it and bow what is (laughs) the treasure you know like no you don't you don't get the experience of like looking for it like looking for the treasure and actually like actually like finding it for yourself you know like 
I think a lot of things in music and learning the、mm. learning communities, like they think like, oh, we're simplifying it,、mm. we're making it easier. It's、yeah. really good because like the the real book, right?、Yeah. Like that's a, a a book of music for like jazz standards,、yeah. and then. Just they, like the chords and stuff on it. Yeah, and and you can still buy、mm-hmm. it, but before it used to be this like secret thing that you buy <laughs> at shops or、yeah. like you know, and they, they didn't really sell it, but if you ask for it, they'll give、mm-hmm. you a photocopy for like you know whatever. <laughs> and it's like it's a crazy thing. But then I've also heard the story that like it came out, and I think Berkeley Music, right, like put it out first,、yeah. or like one of those music colleges、mm-hmm. put it out first. And the whole idea was like, let's get people up to jazz standards, right?、Mm-hmm. And then it became a thing of like, if you use the real book and you bring it,、mm-hmm. like jazz musicians, real jazz musicians will like snub you because they're like, <laughs> that's not the real way to learn music. <laughs> <laughs> real book, it's a、yeah. fake book. And, and, and so I, <laughs> I, I, I have those. Yeah, you have a fake book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. and it's like the same thing with tabs、mm-hmm. too. I hear like,、uh, you know, tabs were like. The the way to learn, and、mm-hmm. I I use tabs too sometimes,、mm-hmm. but like now you hear a lot of like guitar mus- or teachers go like,、mm-hmm. don't use tabs,、yeah. like don't、yeah. rely on tabs. Tabs are, are they're fine, but they're not.、Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be the、mm-hmm. be all end all way. To yeah,、learn. I think like the the thing with tabs is almost the same thing as the thing with strumming patterns because the tabs is like here are the notes, and you just kind of rearrange them however you want. So there's a lot of people that are like. Um, lacking the、uh, um, like phrasing component because you know、mm-hmm. it doesn't show you how to phrase those notes together. So you just、mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, well that's it. You know, so somebody who doesn't have rhythm, like, will not, will never have rhythm if they keep just you know relying on relying on the tab and instead of you know like feeling it out for themselves and getting the groove and then getting the rhythm. Same exact thing for people you know that are asking for strumming patterns. It's great they can play the song and stuff. They can play the pattern that you have to, but. It's gonna be hard for them to feel grooves and kind of you know like and feel a rhythm pattern that you know that's not given to them. Even ones that's kind of given to them. If I was to give somebody、uh, like for example, every lower Friday night jam, you know, be like, okay, well, you know, like down, chunk up, up, down for drop, baby, drop and stuff. But the way that that person is gonna be playing it, the way that I'm playing it, regardless of like skill level, is gonna be two different things. If he doesn't kind of just go with、yeah. my my groove, my feel,、really, like, yeah.、Listen. Uh, Andrew in the chat said,、mm. "A whole the whole idea of strum pattern still <laughs> blows my mind. In twenty years of playing guitar, I had never heard of it until I started playing yeah. ukulele. So, and, yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, we don't want to like because strum patterns were were around before you know before we were、uh, we were a thing, but because we used it so much in the beginning, I think you know like." People are like, oh, that works! Like this, this <laughs> way of teaching the ukulele works, and we're just like, and it was.、Uh, if, if we're gonna talk about it now, it was、um, uh, suggested by、uh, Aiko Yamashiro. I was like, oh my god, he's <laughs> gonna kill me. Aiko Yamashiro. She、um, she used to teach for Roy Sukuma,、um, the Roy Sukuma Ukulele School up on Oahu and stuff. And we're trying to、um, teach、uh, Loud Faces from the Quiet Tab, the song that I wrote. Now it's like episode two. Of、uh, of lessons with I'm Hawaii, the old website that we used to,、uh, that we used to do, make the videos for, and、um, I had the strumming pattern of.、Uh, uh, I was like, how do I like, you know, how do I teach that groove? Like,、mm-hmm. it, you know, because back then when like somebody teaches your group to use the songs, like, like, oh, listen to it, listen to it. Here's the chords. They'll just that's all they see. Like,、yeah. Well, the chords is this and this. So just kind of follow, right? One, two, three.、Uh, that's it. Like that's that was instruction. Like back in the day, like、uh-huh. here are the chords. And then change. I think. Then, yep. Or、uh, I, I think like something people might not understand too is.、Mm-hmm. That was. It wasn't just like if you're learning from a friend or learning、mm-hmm. from an uncle, right? How to play music. Yeah. That like that's how I learned how to play ukulele from a kumu. Yeah. Like they didn't give you anything, right? Like yeah, they just yeah, made yeah. sure. Oh, are you holding down the right strings and right frets? <laughs>、yeah. Okay, good. Like, yeah, and just just oh, strum. Kumu, kumu is teacher in teacher, Hawaii. Teacher. Yeah. So it's、yeah. like for uh for kids here in、mm. Hawaii, there's usually like. A special teacher that will come to the school that、mm-hmm. will give like Hawaiian classes、mm-hmm. or do like Hawaiian culture、mm-hmm. kind of things too, right?、Mm-hmm. So that's that's where I learned. Yeah. So you know, Aiko suggested that like, okay, well, why don't you go 
down, cha, chunk. But then that's kind of yeah. like when those things start. I'm just like and break it into yeah, two. Break it so into two. Kind of yeah. Do, so do like the first part you, of it first, and then the second and part. You put of the it. two together. It's down, yeah. chunk. It's like down, chunk, down, up, or so or something like that. Yeah. She broke it down into two, and it blew my mind. I'm like, oh my goodness, like that is. Hi, I'm gonna have to steal that. And ten years later, here I am. I'm like, maybe I shouldn't have stole that. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like maybe well, I shouldn't have stole that. But then I, again, like yeah. we're we're here because, like, you know, I like, I, I took that from her. <laughs> I don't think, like, mm-hmm. I think even if we didn't do that, like, yeah. we would have gotten comments like, mm-hmm. "Where's the strumming pattern? I need yeah, the strumming oh, that's pattern." True, that's true. Like, it would have been. I think because a lot of other places mm-hmm. use strumming patterns also too, yeah. and I think it. Mm-hmm came from like a divergence it wasn't like yeah you guys yeah. came up with it right? no, no no i mean it's definitely we just kind of made it like uh more accessible in the ukulele community like it's it was a easy way to learn things and we're like that that's it like that's that's the formula you know like that's the formula to learning songs and stuff and it's worked out so well that like everyone like on youtube that teaches ukulele like <laughs> is using it but that yeah. it, it's basically Eichel's fault. <laughs> it's basically Eichel's fault, and you know, and I'm not gonna, I'm not scared to like to kind of be like, oh, I, you know, it's we 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 did it first. Like, no, that was Kalala wise. Like, we made it kind of prominent. Like, that's that's it. This is the formula to learning how to play. You tell them the chords, you tell them the strumming pattern, and mm-hmm. then and that's picking, it for picking and, yeah. and what. Yeah, picking, and then that's it. Like, you know, it's like then ta da, you learn that song. You know, and just like. It's like magic, but back then it's like you gotta kind of feel it. But it was harder before. But like we said at the top of the hour, that like you know, awesome things shouldn't be that that easy. So because it was so easy, it made kind of you know people like okay, well, what is the strumming pattern? Sort of like, you know, yeah, reliant. On reliant. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So now what this what kind of uh, you know what we were kind of getting into is um is the new changes in the new year. We're gonna try to um, you know teach in a more natural way because um we don't want to do the uh the easy way uh to kind of to teach anymore where like you know you you kind of just learn the down up chunk up down up whatever it's like going to be a little bit more natural like how you would naturally learn things Mm -hmm. instead of just so that yeah you don't get hung up on that Mm -hmm. and then you can you can progress further than you would with just learning Mm -hmm. yeah because at that point, if you learn it naturally that way, then you can naturally follow rhythm. So if you can naturally follow rhythm, that means I, you know you can you can jam with other people, and it wouldn't it wouldn't be you know like you wouldn't be asking for strumming patterns. You would just know by just feeling the groove. I, I think it's kind of like uh, like a lot of people learn chunking from other mm-hmm. people on YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. And they they learn to chunk with their mm-hmm. palm flat, mm-hmm. right? And then yeah. when they come to us, they're like, "How come my chunk doesn't sound good?" Yeah, and we kind of have to be like. Well, mm-hmm. we have to take it a step back because you <laughs> kind of, you know, we don't want to say that you learn wrong, but you learn in a yeah. way that it's going to hinder your next step forward. Mm-hmm. So we got to take it a step back. You have to mm-hmm. relearn this and then you can move forward from that. Mm-hmm. And so many people like they go into the one on one. Right. And it just takes like five minutes with you. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, I can chunk now. <laughs> I can chunk and I can chunk really good. Like I can chunk mm-hmm. smoothly. And it's like not a hard concept to get, but it's just that like they they thought of it in a different way right so it's like making sure that i think with uh this new style it's like making sure you're you're getting started on the mm-hmm. right track so it's just like mm-hmm. a smoother mm-hmm. like smoother transition when you keep going right yeah, hopefully yeah. And, and hopefully you'll just keep growing more and more yeah so you know it's, it's gonna be a little bit more natural because like if you're teaching somebody strumming pattern that that doesn't have rhythm because you know they, they've never played an instrument before for example and stuff and if you're doing down up chunk up up down up down up chunk up you're saying that in you know in rhythm mm-hmm. for them it's like they're concentrating mostly on just the okay now it's down and up and then a chunk and then up down up so like they're kind of trying to like piece that together and the whole groove is off you know and yeah so that's kind of what we don't want to happen anymore. We want people to kind of build grooves for themselves. So uh, tell us a little bit about this um, this upcoming lesson. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You can check it out and you can give us Monday. feedback yeah, once, was, once it yeah. comes out. Was, but um, it, it is kind of an intermediate lesson and we do have to go back and 
we'll do kind of an, an intro to like mm-hmm. this style of mm-hmm. new, teaching new style mm-hmm. of um mm-hmm. practicing basically mm-hmm. yeah because um because you really won't get anywhere unless you practice and so it's kind of mm-hmm. it's it's like helpful for your own personal practice mm-hmm. and you can stop at any point go back mm-hmm. redo the parts that you're having trouble with but mm-hmm. it's it's really just um yeah. Yeah, different a different way of um, kind of practicing your chords, different mm-hmm. way of kind of practicing your your getting getting that rhythm down. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, it's it's interesting because that's the thing is that people think that um, you you listen to a piece of music, it goes into your ear, and then in order to play that, your brain has to process it, mm. and that is not necessarily it, what is happening mm, with musicians mm, you it, know so like so there are um i mean your central nervous system mm, is part of you know everything yeah and so there are connections between your ear mm, and your eyes mm, and like directly to different parts of your body yeah, yeah, yeah. and so what musicians are doing when they're when they're hearing something and reacting or they're mm. playing with a group and they're mm. reacting to the groove like we, we've talked about that mm. before it's it's faster than them hearing something thinking about it like you mm. know processing it and see like oh yeah, did they yeah. did they skip a beat there or did they like move to a different chord mm. there it, it kind of goes from the the input straight to where to they the are point, yeah. yeah and so yeah. we kind of need to help you develop that system like mm-hmm. like imagine if it's it's like the same thing is as if you're speaking your first language mm-hmm. and when you wanted to re, re or like respond to somebody mm-hmm. you hear what they say and then you have to put it through google translate back to your first language <laughs> yeah then you, yeah. you then you say like uh mm-hmm. then you say what you want to say right or you put it through google translate you put it back through Google Translate mm-hmm. to get it to whatever language they're mm-hmm. speaking, and then you say it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, it is kind of similar to learning a language and being able to use a, yeah. a language, and mm-hmm. and so we've actually done a lot of research uh, on that end too, like on like learning, you know, adult yeah. learning, uh, learning something brand new, and um, what kind of the steps that you kind of have to take in order to become fluent in mm-hmm. whatever new skill that you're you're kind of developing later in life I, so so people people kind of compare themselves to like the kids on youtube like <laughs> like oh man i'm an adult and like i can't even play as good as this little toddler on youtube and and a lot of it has to do with this um, guys like fang e exist <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's sort of like you know it has to do with they a lot of it is they're not doing the processing no you know or no and, and I, I was and that, talking to yeah. mm-hmm. I was talking to Ryan too about this. It's like uh, a lot of people say like, "Oh, I've been playing for like a year though, and I'm not getting any better or something, right?" Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Oh, I play for 30 minutes uh, every day for a year, and I'm not getting any better and stuff." Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, well, like this this person, the reason why it seems like they got better mm-hmm. is because they locked themselves in a the room. Mm-hmm. And they played for nine hours a day, right? <laughs> yeah. Like they, they may maybe it's like it seems like they got better in a week, but that's because they're putting all their time, like it's mm-hmm. more concentrated mm-hmm. yeah, amounts yeah. of practice or playing mm-hmm. rather than like going like, oh, I'm gonna just play for thirty minutes today, and you know, and we 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 recommend like practicing for thirty minutes, mm-hmm. which I think is still a good thing. Yeah, but uh, like playing. How much, yeah, playing yeah, really playing. does, playing, and I think playing factors into mm-hmm. practicing mm-hmm. those skill sets of, yeah. like, listening and yeah. reacting yeah. and trying things. Because, you know, you're practicing and you're, you're kind of uh, looking at, like, techniques and, you know, and theories and stuff. But then when you're playing, it's, like, the applications of those, like, pra- things that you practice. So you can't just, like, keep studying and studying and studying and not actually, like, you know, like, put into application and you've never you just know things in theory you know mm-hmm. like so it's a combination of both so it's a 30 minute you know that's what we recommend uh 30 minute like practice to just like really look down you know like and work on your chops and do all that stuff but the application is very very important yeah so playing you can do yeah. as much yeah as, as much of that stuff as you want for. yeah 
So, but, you know, um, I used to play for hours on hours on it. Locking myself in the room, just like yeah. I said, you know? Well, like, we, we've listened to other, you know, professionals like mm-hmm. Chris Salvador and uh, Umu Kale. Garza. Yeah, Kale, too. Like, he broke his uh, his arm playing uh, playing baseball or something. And then, um, you know, so he's like, oh, I can't play baseball anymore. So, like, what am I going to do, like, you know, with, with my hands? And it's kind of when he picked up the ukulele. And then he started, you know, he's just like, he was like, no, I don't want to say depressed and stuff, but, you know, he had kind of a, like a low time where he's like, ah, I really love playing baseball. Yeah. Like, I just concentrated on playing this instrument and he did. Yeah. That's kind of what made him so good. Yeah. But, but I mean, the kind of the point mm-hmm. to that is that they are like, you know, people who get really good, mm-hmm. they start developing that kind of ear to hand connections. Yeah. The, the quick ear to hand connections mm-hmm. or the eye to hand connections. Mm-hmm. Um, use it like really developing that instead of mm. developing the ear to brain to processing mm. to <laughs> hand you know like if yeah. you're if you're developing that system mm. you're developing a slower system mm-hmm. and more, it's, it's you know? yeah it's kind of hard too because there are people who want to learn like uh, or we if we go back to like the mountain analogy right mm-hmm. uh, we were talking about like there's people who there isn't there's people who will just like look at the mountain and be like wow that's a big mountain time to get start climbing right and yeah. they climb they just like start going but then there's other people who will be like i need to take a helicopter tour around the entire mountain to see what i'm gonna get into see like what the path is like you know see oh i gotta plan a Oh, let me take out my map and plan mm-hmm. out the route and what time mm-hmm. i should be here and here mm-hmm. like they want that yeah. and it's like really hard like Music isn't necessarily yeah, like a yeah. straightforward path like that where you yeah. can really. But I mean, there there are advantage advantages to both kind of things, mm-hmm. and you kind of yeah. have to blend them. Yeah, make a compromise yeah. between both. Because yeah. if you don't look, you know, if you don't look ahead of what's gonna come and stuff, and yeah. you might be blindsided by something. But if you know you're so calculated that if something doesn't go right or like yeah oh, i've been or, i've spent two weeks on this i should be you know i should be or, this you, right or now you or may whatever. you may never yeah. actually go yeah, yeah that's yeah. true yeah that's you over or, or, yeah. or you're like oh i'm stuck at this mm-hmm. one point and look mm-hmm. at that rock it's really high i'll get to there eventually yeah uh, uh it's like oh, you, not today not today oh it doesn't <laughs> that rock looks like a little bit more chippy than it looked before or whatever <laughs> it's like yeah, just go like <laughs> there is some things that you learn just from doing right like just trying yeah like and you can only learn from just trying yeah it's hard to explain like we we try our best to explain it like verbally or through like writing stuff out Mm -hmm. but unless you put your hands on it and you just like you know yeah do it it's like yeah so so that's kind of what we're working on yes um developing things that will help you Mm -hmm. to to Mm -hmm. strike that compromise between Mm -hmm. over planning (laughs) and Mm -hmm. like uh, just jumping straight in mm-hmm. you know it's kind of mm-hmm. you you kind of need both and, I, and yeah and, and people like ask like or people you know i think that's one of the reasons why kids learn so fast mm-hmm. is because kids are like less likely like if you tell them like oh if they want to do something right and you go like here uh, try this mm-hmm. they're just gonna like take it and try it yeah, yeah. like i i just uh spent time with my nephew yeah. and i showed him a magic trick yeah He's like, how do you do that, Uncle Kai? And I was like, it's magic. So I didn't tell him how to do yeah. it, right? And he took the cards from me and he just started doing it. He started to try it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, is this your card? And I'm like, nope, that's wrong, <laughs> right? But like, he's like, oh, man. But in that sense, he got started before mm-hmm. he even knew like it's, yeah, what It's because there's no fear of failure. Like I have uh, I used to skateboard back in the day. And so mm-hmm. when I was in college and stuff, I could skateboard pretty well, I thought. But I was like... If I had started when I was like five, six, seven years old, you know, where I had no fear, like, <laughs> I could I could have been way better because I'm not like scared of trying all those, you know, those or, things. But as a, I think you and I think like you're not scared of falling down, right? Either, yeah, yeah, yeah. like you understand, like I'm gonna fall eventually. Yeah. Like so, with you know, with the ukulele, it's like we're scared to like, oh, I don't want to do it because I don't want to look stupid, you know, like if I get it wrong, and so I don't want to sound dumb and whatever. But thing is, we gotta sound dumb. We gotta look stupid sometimes because. It's the only way you'll know what not to look like or what not to yeah, do, you know? Like, yeah. how are you supposed to learn unless you make mistakes? Like, I've made tons, you know? Yeah. This and morning. actually, the... <laughs> With the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> shirt choice. <laughs> 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 yeah, actually, the 
um, the learning actually mm-hmm. happens mm-hmm. when you make the mistake mm-hmm. because it gets wired into your brain. Yeah. Like you know, take that out mm-hmm. of the you yeah. know your out of your the choices the mm-hmm. the choices mm-hmm. that you can make that will sound mm-hmm. good. Take that one out immediately. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. because it you know, you play the wrong note and it shocks <laughs> your system and you mm-hmm. it says like I don't want to do that again. Like, yeah. You know? you, and it, so like the the making the mistakes mm-hmm. actually help you with your mm-hmm. learning process mm-hmm. faster than if you played everything perfectly the first time mm-hmm. you know it, it, it wouldn't have that same impact on you in that sense too you kind of have to be like you kind of have to be like a little bit honest with yourself right and be like oh i messed up on this thing oh yeah, no yeah. like it's and it it feels bad in the moment mm-hmm. right like yeah. oh, why didn't I just do this right <laughs> but then it really is like that if you feel that that means yeah. that you're you're already starting to the yeah. growing process because you know you that's that's an important lesson to to get it wrong you know like into or to fall down like we were just talking about earlier and um you know with with, with kids that's why the, that's why kids learn a lot better than adults do because they're not afraid to make those mistakes they're not afraid of, you know to to look dumb or whatever that, to sound stupid that preconceived notion yeah, of yeah. like i'm an adult i need to yeah i, I, know I should how be to do this. this like i should be doing that yeah. or whatever yeah. you know but you know um you know what is uh is good though is uh if you write your own song <laughs> no <Nah. laughs> <laughs> i'm trying, to, trying, to, like, trying to figure out a way to like segue, segue into the thing and i'm like <laughs> uh, you know and then i had the like, i had the the opportunity to make a segue and i'm just like uh <laughs> before, <laughs> we, <laughs> before we before we we go to that yeah. though, uh alan did have a question yeah. where he said how do drummers learn rhythm patterns counting beats out like is that and um, it, it's I, okay uh with, with with drummers um you know you could learn a, a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of drummers will just go and uh like naturally they'll just like you mm-hmm. know just like just follow like follow rhythms and stuff not every drummer who goes to you know who goes to learn the drums is gonna go like take a class and then read this music notation and be like no i just want to do well i just want to do yeah. this you know I, so i think... start up uh, or there, there's always like music that's right. gonna be too hard, right? Yeah. And knowing music notation and knowing that mm-hmm. makes it easier to learn the first time. Mm-hmm. But I think most like drummers and mm-hmm. other musicians, we don't like. I, I hope at least like you don't. You're not in your head like one two three four now yeah, one exactly, two three exactly, four one. Yeah. That, like yeah. again, that's if you're thinking that yeah. that's too slow already. Yeah. yeah. Like you should feeling it is like the mm-hmm. fastest way. So. Yeah, and that's you know, and that's why like you go to a class to figure out what it is that you're doing naturally. You know, like oh, that's you know, that's like where the hits are supposed to be, and this is you know, this is the rhythm. But you know, a lot of a lot of people like even like the like I, I was saying some of the best groups you know in the world and stuff. Like you go to uh, look at the Beatles, like with Ringo Starr. It's not like he you know first time he like picked up a, a pair of drumsticks and he's like looking at music notes like okay one and two and no he just started banging away and started like <laughs> listening to his records and see if he can you know like follow uh follow along with the yeah. records it's it's exactly the same thing you know it's not like okay now ringo you're gonna play one and two and three and four and one and two like, and three and four. you know it's just it, you yeah. or, or we use the counting system too mm-hmm. right sometimes yeah. like when we're teaching yeah. rhythm and that's a good way to learn the start yeah. but again it's like it's same as drumming patterns like mm-hmm. you don't want that to be what you ke- rely on yeah like eventually it should just be like i can feel where yeah. things are well, supposed yeah. to mm-hmm. be and that's what makes a good drummer you know like there's uh there are drummers that like uh in, that are that are good like that's you know that have no um, like no groove to it like they're technically good where like they'll hit everything like in you know in the right spot but there's no groove to it you know mm-hmm. like that's kind of what we're what we're doing here and those people are fine if you're going to play like in an, in an orchestra or, or anything like that that everyone has to be in the same kind of time you know at the same time together but you're still kind of grooving with the rest of the people mm-hmm. and um yeah the more natural way is to just pick up the sticks and just just hit you kind of yeah, kind of yeah. imitate mm-hmm. what, you, what hear you hear in your head or what you hear mm-hmm. on the record mm-hmm. me like music too is like such a free form thing mm-hmm. that you can actually get good from being bad <laughs> and being continuing to be bad right because like that is that is totally like jay dilla right mm-hmm. like they said like jay dilla was never on time mm-hmm. but because he did it so often that people could like 
oh, I can feel the groove yeah, because yeah, he's yeah. like off Ridic- so <laughs> often. <laughs> Predictably off, off, yeah. off too. Yeah. And then suddenly he two thumbs and does the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ask Aaron about that. You know, it's yeah. like, I'm almost never on the downbeat. It's, it, you know what it is? If not, I, I don't think it's exactly that, but some of it is I can maybe play because if I'm just playing, I can do things like in rhythm. But once I start singing and start to like mm-hmm. incorporate that, the speed of the lyrics that I sing and the speed of my strobing is like two different <laughs> yeah. things and one goes ahead of you know of, of uh-huh. another uh-huh. i think that's my main problem but yeah it's just it's it's tough but aaron knows that i'm going to consistently go to beat one sooner than, than yeah. i should be so yeah at certain mm. spots so <laughs> yeah. i can i kind of predict do where i'm gonna go and that's, yeah. that's yeah. kind of like you're learning aldrin's groove right yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. not like yeah. a, a steady thing that you can just like look at mm-hmm. and be like oh he's gonna do this every time right but it's like oh i can feel that like yeah. i i know that i played enough with him that i know that it's gonna come up yeah so you know what's gonna come up Kahai song. uh yeah, no it's not, not. So. <laughs> <laughs> well not not for not today right. <laughs> so um, let's get to you know let's get to the challenge. Thanks for thanks for your question. We have we only have like 13 minutes left, so I kind of want to get through these before we get to the challenges. Um, I said that I would give uh, presents to the people who did the challenges to kind of reward so people last, who were trying. Last challenge. Last, last challenge. Yeah, I I brought these at, you know last week. Yeah, like, but we didn't give we, it away. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we didn't. Yeah. So we didn't kind of show. So for the two people, I think of, oh sorry, is uh, Mark and um, and Alan, right? Who did Dallin, the challenge? Daniel. Oh, Daniel. Yeah, Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. Daniel. Daniel. So. Uh, for Mark and Daniel, we have chocolate macadamia um, coffee. It's a medium dark coffee. This is chocolate macadamia. And I said I was going to make it kind of holiday theme. So this is a, a ornament of Santa playing the ukulele on top of a, a turtle. <laughs> so it's a turtle, <laughs> Santa playing the ukulele. And um, this one is Santa playing the ukulele next to a grass shack. <laughs> so it's a uh, little grass shack. Santa playing uh, playing youth. And of course, two of these. So the people who you know who did the challenges, we, we do want to encourage you guys to, uh, to try these challenges on. So we're going to be giving these away to, uh, to Mark and Daniel. All right, so congratulations, guys. Um, so how many people did this challenge, the 251 challenge? So uh, Mark just turned his in today, uh-huh. but even he said like, "Oh, with the holidays coming up, like yeah, it was tough. Yeah, I like, all right. He usually he does it with mm-hmm. his wife, right? Mm-hmm. And they kind of do a duet. So he said that he maybe he'll redo it and then post that video like mm-hmm. a week from now. But it, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, okay. he got a video in though. Yeah, yeah. Like nobody so, else did. It? did it? Uh, no, I, that that's it. Or like, and I I talked to <laughs> Renee I think yeah. about uh, right. the challenge, but. She, uh, only Mark put a video. Mm, so. That's fine. Yeah. You know, like, it was um, like first this week, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, it it was busy for everyone, and that's what Aaron was like, "Did you get your song? Because you're probably busy." I'm like, "Actually, I did get my song. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my song early, and um, I, I've I've been writing, so it's kind of cheating because uh, I've I actually have been writing for the past few months. I wanna I wanna put out a new album soon. I haven't put out an album in like three years, four years, or something. Going on four years, I think next year. Um, I started writing stuff and um, I was like this this song that I kind of had so it's not like I didn't write it yet I just had a little components of here and there and then the 251 I'm like hey that was it for that song that I was writing so this is like one of the title you know one not the title track but one of the songs for this new album that I'm working on so this is a song called Good Morning oh no Sunnyside whatever <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any lyrics in front of me so I'm gonna, just gonna shoot from the hip <laughs> Morning sunrise on my window pane Crawling closer to my face I pick up my four string Jam up the song stuck in my head Good morning Wake up, look up Wake up, look out See a sunrise Got 
down on your plate, see a sunny side. Crawling closer to my face Pick up my four string Play up the song stuck in my head Good morning Wake up, look out, see the sunrise Look down on your plate, see the sunny side Yeah. <laughs> that's like a little preview of some of the stuff that I'm writing for the new album. So what was the chord what was the two five one chords? Oh, that okay, you so two five one, so B minor. So it's an it's an A. So two and to the five, which is E, and then the one. So morning sunrise on my window pane. Crawling closer to my face. So all that two five one then is gonna go to that. Pick up my four string, jam up the song stuck in my head. Good morning, and then I snuck in that two. Like it's a it's a half, uh, it's a half measure. So it's just one two. Oh, yeah, that was part of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Part of the I tried to be I tried to be a little tricky, right? So pick up the song stuck in my head. Good morning, wake up, I mm. see the sunrise. Mm. Ooh, so uh, half measure right at the end. Uh, look down on your plate, see a sunny side. Because I wanted to do like a look out, then look down. I'm like, mm -hmm. I love eggs. Because the new album, I'm calling it Loco Moku. So like I wrote this for that. But that's my song. <laughs> and uh, the picking is a simple. Like nothing too fancy. And I just kind of wanted to show you guys that it's just, it, it doesn't take that much to like write, you know, like write a decent song. And, you know, it doesn't have to be so... Uh, I was telling Aaron this last night. I'm like, the past couple like songs that I've put out on like the song challenge and stuff have been like super like, you know, like oh I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this instrumental kinda... heavy and stuff. I'm like, no, I'm gonna go the opposite direction and uh, and write something. So, yeah, but yeah, that's my that's sense. that's the mistake I made. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, I I don't have my song ready and mm -hmm. I I asked for it. It's like a a kid coming in right and being like. <laughs> Uh, teacher, <laughs> teacher, can I can I get an extension on my homework, please? Like you know, uh, yeah. But I started writing my song, mm -hmm. and I I'm writing like different orchestration parts, like different parts mm -hmm. for different instruments, and then it's just like uh, I'm not gonna finish this in time. <laughs> and I don't, I didn't want to come to Too like many. today and then be like, oh, here's my kind of half, half song, yeah, right? Yeah, I want to yeah. get it done, so yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll bring it next week. Yeah, I, this is a half song. I didn't write out the second verse. It was basically one verse and chorus, and I might add like a bridge in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. It and an actual like, like, part. Yeah, but it yeah, sounds yeah. like an old dream girl song. It sounds like that something that I would write. But I like, you know, um, cool little like lyric stuff, like got uh, crawling. To uh, what is it? Uh, crawling closer and things like that, like up and down and out and stuff. It's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> hey. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Eh? <laughs> Bro, your guitar for this. Alan, Alan said, what was the strumming pattern? Feel it, buddy. Feel it out, man. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so actually, that that wasn't no. in the key of A because no. this this a ukulele five. is tuned. Oh, down that is that. true. It's a G sharp. Man. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why Aldrin's ukulele is tuned down a half step <laughs> is because uh, we, we've been talking about Ka'au Creator Boys kind of a lot <laughs> lately. And uh -huh. so, um, so that I wrote kind of like a Kao Creative Boys like inspired style <laughs> song. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, <laughs> so yeah. So um, so one of the things mm -hmm. that they would do for the Kao Creative Boys is, I guess it that that like the key of E or the key of F sharp kind of match their voices mm -hmm. better. So they would they would pretty consistently tone tune. tune down a half step. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it, I think that's that's no oh, tune tune that's gotta my, tune. I mean, <laughs> so yeah, so so my uke's not used so to just just for the sake of authenticity, I tune down and then we tune oh. this one down too. So 
Yeah, he came in the office. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh, my song's gonna be half some lore. Sorry, oh, yeah. Lord, you call it for you. I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> he's like, I'm going for a Kyle Creative Voice feel. I'm like, oh, yeah, I can't yeah. really start the show. Let's just yeah. do the song and first. Also, <laughs> also, I didn't I didn't create any picking parts, and I was just assuming that Aldrin would do it on the spot. So, <laughs> so you're gonna see this happen oh, in, in, in real time. time. In, in real, real time. time. <laughs> oh, wait, here, let me just oh, let me yeah. check to make sure. But, um, yeah, so this is. Well, while Aaron's tuning, we actually did get a question um, on Intercom, and I thought maybe you could answer that really sure. quick. Sure, sure. Was uh, somebody said like, so that's the ukulele that you usually have in the back, right? Yeah. You put it in the back, and they asked like, why is that ukulele retired? You know, oh, like because or... uh, I, I, you know, Kanelea gives me uh, ukuleles on on the regular and stuff, but this one I've been like strongly fond of, and it's one of those like don't fix it if it ain't broken kind of ukes and stuff, and. Um, it's just been my workhorse for since. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, like, so it still plays fine and it, yes, it, yes. you can still perform with yes. it, but it just. It, yeah, it's not like it's, you know, it's broken or anything. It still works. I actually performed with this what, last week or something where I forgot my, my UK yeah. home and I had to run into the office and grab the ukulele. So it's perfectly fine, all good. It's actually stage ready, you know, it's, so it's, it's there when I need it. Um, but. I mean, I've just beaten this thing to death for the past, like, I want to say I've, six, seven years that I've had this ukulele. You, you, I think, like, you, you can't really tell from, like, farther away, but mm. you have that, like, scratch guard on it, right? And yeah. And it's, like, kind of, you can see. It is scratched up beyond. I mean, this, I think, is the biggest, like, sadness Ding. that I feel in uh, my soul. Corner. Yeah. Corner of the head. Oh, it's not that bad. I see that. Yeah. That is a chunk off the, uh, both... The mahogany, the mahogany, and, and, the the, and the ebony. So that, like, I must have done that pretty hard. And okay, so Aaron so, yeah, so, yeah. song because uh, so so the chords go like. And then I think the chorus, we're gonna go to the, um, do that kind of, do that first, okay. but the rest of it is pretty much the same. same. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so this is, it's like one, four, it. one, five, <laughs> yeah. two, five, one. Yeah. <laughs> so just stay on the end for this time. And I don't know, you wanna do something oh. like, just to get into the song. <laughs>
my god. I, I started smiling as soon as you guys started playing. Because I was like, isn't this nice. like... This yeah, is, is a concrete voice song. It's on, it's on, yeah. it's on. Or I was like, isn't this... Isn't this the same as like Crystal Chandelier? Yeah, like, it's very like Crystal it's, Chandelier, but then there's like yeah. some different chord progressions when, in there. I like the the B seven, uh, no, not B, B flat seven to the G minor. Uh-huh. That is a nice touch. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah. Okay, so tell this the lyrics and all that. So this song, um, it just kind of sound mm. well like like I wake mm. up early and my girlfriend wakes up late. So so if you listen to the lyrics. That's a pretty literal kind of thing, <laughs> but actually, what I was writing about, because um, like the chorus came to me first, and I kind of wanted to do it like really, mm. really simple, because mm. like Kyle Crater Boys, they did a lot of covers. Um, this is mm. like they did a lot of country songs, mm-hmm. um, kind of just in their style. Yeah. So like I, I wanted to write a country song oh, <laughs> that like yeah, like a, a country song yeah. that um, you could kind of like reggaeify. Uh-huh. And so that's what that's what it was. So I, the chorus came to me first because mm-hmm. they they wrote a lot about surfing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I, like I don't know anything about <laughs> surfing. So, but then I do a lot of running. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, so I wrote wrote a song about running, and I live in Wailua, which is at the base of the Sleeping Giant Mountain. Mm-hmm. And so, like, this is actually a song about Sleeping Giant. Oh, cool, cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so the like, slumber, I like the yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, so I wake up in the morning and I wait for you to wait for you to rise mm-hmm. so like the sun right i usually right, go up right. go in the morning um you know how much i love you by my side so mm-hmm. like i'm really close yeah. to the base of the sleeping giant uh as as i stare into the air you're breathing out into the sky i think of all the memories of the climb so it's like obvious that <laughs> yeah. it actually is mountain, a song about yeah. running mm. and then second verse is waiting for the daylight or oh, i step into the mist stirring up some trouble in my mind but the more I trace the edges of your sleeping body line, nice. the more you wake from slumber into life. So nice. like, it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it, <laughs> that's that's kind of what it is. And and this is one of those songs, too, like we've talked about before, whenever you're writing a song, mm-hmm. um, you kind of realize a song that it actually is. Like, oh, yeah. you, know, <laughs> it, you know, like the, the song wants mm-hmm. to write itself, right? Like, yeah, it kind of yeah, has yeah. a mind. No, of no, but more, more like, um, like I, you're, you're I, tracing had, over. I had the idea <laughs> and then I realized that, oh, this is a song that already yeah, exists. Yeah. And the song that I want to write, mm. uh, what I wanted to write mm-hmm. was actually, um, Modo Cut You on My Mind by Blaine Asin. Oh, okay, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is a much better song. So if, you, <laughs> if you really want to listen to um, the song that I probably was tracing or, or wanted, to, wanted to write, he, he does a lot nicer chord changes. He has, like, much better lyrics. But, but that, that's a great song. Um, but, but even as I realized that that's what I was thinking... <laughs> I, this song had to come out because, like, I I kept playing yeah, my yeah. chords, not not Blaine's chords. Yeah. I kept playing my chords, mm-hmm. and then lyrics kept popping up in my mind mm-hmm. for for my own song. Mm-hmm. And so this song just had to be birthed before I could yeah. move on to anything else. <laughs> I used to let it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it was it was very much like I wanted to keep the chorus really simple because all of their choruses yeah. were really mm-hmm. simple. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. I could, yeah, yeah. I could totally yeah. hear, um, yeah. like you know, you saying like on the run, and then like a harmony of like somebody yeah. following it, yeah. right? Yeah. On the run, yeah, yeah. So it yeah. was. This is very complicated, boys. Very, I love yeah. it. Yeah, good job, Harry. <laughs> Always oh, awesome. Harry's like saying yeah, like, oh, oh, <laughs> if you want to listen to like a better version, I was like, I <laughs> like this version. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah, this, this song. That's the thing is that like you know, mm-hmm. whenever you're writing, even if yeah. it does remind you of something else. Mm-hmm. Um, it also reminded me of Blowing in the Wind, I think, when I first started writing mm-hmm. writing it. It was yeah, like, maybe it's that. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, because it's your own song, you mm-hmm. can just take it in any direction that it needs mm-hmm. to go. Mm-hmm. And this one definitely was just like Kyle Creative Boy's kind of tribute Sense. yeah song i like the the touch of like the uh, the, the half step. Half it step, actually gives yeah. it that sound. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I knew it was going to make a difference, but snap the feel it's the it more the feel like not like that. not even like how it sounds it was the feel of the song feels more closer to uh you know to Kyle creative voice but awesome job man that's yeah. so good see now i can't wait just to hear the highs <laughs> well i was i was telling uh, aaron that like I w- i've been writing when i can so it's like mm. 
after we had our my family had like a christmas party at night i went home and then like i stayed up to 12 to write like some, the song and stuff mm-hmm. but then it's like the same thing too like you mm-hmm. i went to bed mm-hmm. and i was like ah, dang it <laughs> like i just thought of something yeah, that yeah. it's oh, still it got still a, in there yeah it got a yep yeah. yeah, so got off my bed mm-hmm. like climbed down like went to my computer <laughs> turned my computer on like write out that little part okay it's like mm-hmm. done don't like brain <laughs> come on i need to go to yeah, sleep yeah, now yeah, don't wake up already. yeah <laughs> but, but yeah oh so so we'll just mm-hmm. um we'll do like kind of the the new song challenge once we get mm-hmm. uh, kai's Okay. Yeah. It sounds good. So we yeah. won't we won't put a new one out yet. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey. Hey. It's good because uh, actually I want Mike to well actually not I want but Mike wants to participate too. So yeah. We'll yeah. have a, we'll have a song challenge and in the two weeks we'll bring Mike in and he can like he can yeah. kind of give us a song as well. So we'll have Mike later on in the month instead of the beginning of the month as usual. We, mm-hmm. we can kind of leave th- uh, this challenge open too for mm-hmm. like you know this upcoming week too because like mm-hmm. oh the two five one yeah we can or like for anybody who wants to post it in yeah. the forum right because it was kind of like Christmas busy. time yeah, yeah. <laughs> not so that can... not that this week isn't any uh, any less uh, busy years, <laughs> yeah. but, but... Uh, hopefully we see some maybe i could write a second verse for my tune yeah maybe we'll, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. return so aaron aaron is the only one you're yeah, done finished. <laughs> you can get you can get out of here you took the first place podium now it's a fight for second place don't worry <laughs> but also job man what does everybody think about um yeah yeah any cool uh, comments with people um, there's the albi i know right doesn't fear the mountain <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so just people saying that, uh, like, mm-hmm. you guys did a really good job, and then mm-hmm. oh, asking. There's a, there's a question from Alan. Uh, Wouldn't it have been easier to leave the guitar in standard and playing E? Seems like you, uh, you were borrowing the first fret a lot. Yeah. You want me to answer that? Um, I can answer that. Yeah. Because <laughs> okay, um, there's a. Uh, well, I'm you know I'm sorry to kind of answer on behalf of you because it's kind of more regarding the ukulele because mm-hmm. um. It, if you're playing it in E, you're not able to do those, you know, those same like those same fills that you heard that I was doing in F, and that's what gives it that Kyle Crater Boy feel. Kyle Crater Boys didn't really play any song in E, mm-hmm. although they did technically because that song was in E. Yeah. But they never had a song that was in E E for like the uh, for the, for the ukulele, ukulele to yeah. play. So, yeah. but what, um, what would you have said? So, that's, that's so as I'm far as the, as the guitar is concerned. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You yeah, I could have played it in E, mm. and it would have been exactly yeah. the same. <laughs> but um, I guess just the the phrasing of each chord would be different, mm-hmm. and I kind of wanted like I knew that they mm-hmm. did that, mm-hmm. and so I kind of wanted it to sound more like mm-hmm. what they would have done anyway. So you, yeah, you, you also have like a, yeah. a capo on your guitar too, and you, so you could have like barred that that first fret made yeah. it a little bit easier but yeah, yeah i could have barred the, the first just fret went like oh let, I'm, yeah. I'm just gonna play it anyway i'm just gonna but but yeah because some mm. when you play the open chords on the mm. guitar it has to go down to that you yeah know? and yeah, like, so like so if i were to play the like i i could play the f and then i would usually go up to that to the c but if i were to go you would have the e bass yeah i would have that d and you know whatever, and, and, yeah in typical like Ernie Cruz fashion, like, he would have this, he would have the C, and he would hit the E bass, and then go to the F to like kind of yeah. transition from the yeah, C. Yeah, yeah. So you kind of yeah. do need there's that, a lot, you know, like, like open. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, and it's super inconvenient to just tune one into like that's inconvenient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, so, it, it, and that's what the, that's the feel that Aaron was trying yeah. to go for is the Kyle Crater Boys feel. It wouldn't have felt like a Kyle Crater Boys song if he had just stayed yeah. in standard and played it. In e. it it's kind of it kind of is funny how like mm-hmm. just tuning down half a step yeah. can change yeah, the yeah, feel yeah, yeah. like yeah, it really it does write differently too so yeah yeah, yeah. So, so that was the whole point of, uh, of of doing the thing is to get that same feel you know yeah 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 it's not like i think alan's thinking of it in a more technical term but that's like, not it's not a technical decision to do that it's it, a, a more like a you know more emotional, feel. Yeah, yeah. emotional yeah. Yeah. yeah it's 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 feel that's something that you can't you know, like um, you can't you can't notate, you can't yeah, do yeah, any yeah. of that stuff. You yeah. know, like if you if you had it in standard and you were playing it in E, 
Although the notes sound the same, it does not sound the same. Yeah, yeah, you know and I mean? it's and it's kind of like method acting, or like, yeah, you know, I guess, uh, yeah. Like I guess if you so. really want to get into yeah. the character's head, mm. you gotta wear what the character wears. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Anybody else? And that's that's exactly really what we're talking yeah. about. The overanalyzing. I think Alan yeah. is overanalyzing <laughs> things. It's just mainly, and I think he's missing the point or, of just mainly, you know, the feel of uh, I think like how creative. Yeah, was. well, I, I, I think he just wants to understand. Yeah. I think he he's coming from like a practical place, right? Like just yeah. Playing yeah, guitar, right? Yeah. Like I, I can get that. Like, oh, you don't want to. Barring can get hard, and mm -hmm. if you're tired, I could imagine playing that song and be mm -hmm. like, I'm just gonna put a oh, capo yeah. on it to uh -huh. make it easier for myself. But yeah, yeah it, mm -hmm. it if you can, and if mm -hmm. it feels better to you, yeah. it's like mm -hmm. that's an option. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. an overanalyzation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and too hard. Yeah. And Alan said, <laughs> "Me thinking technical." Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have? Who would have thunk? <laughs> Who would have thunk? But all right, so yeah. that's. That's awesome. We'll do uh, we'll do the next challenge next week, and um, we'll send these out to you guys. By the way, so thank you so much for those people that did the challenge, and I think the the people who did the first challenge, we sent them some stuff too, right? The poster. Yeah, yeah. The so Bandito so far challenge. we've been you know we've been giving people some uh, you know some re little rewards and stuff for uh, for doing the challenges, and you know sometimes it'll be something like this, sometimes it'll be something small, sometimes maybe not like there's nothing, but for the most part, I you know I do want to encourage you know you guys to go out and, and make music basically all right so thank you folks so much for listening and thank you thank you so much for watching for those of you folks watching thank you for signing up for uu plus those people listening what are you waiting for sign up for uu plus to take your ukulele playing to the next level you want to you know you want to get as good as aaron sign up for uu plus and that uh, will give you all the right tools to play the ukulele just like aaron Malcolm plays his guitar all right with that said we'll see you folks next time stick around for songs made easy which is the last episode of songs made easy and we'll explain why um coming you know coming up next and and i think we've explained it in, in the beginning where like we kind of want to head towards a different direction songs made easy is not going to make that journey over i think so we'll explain that a little bit more uh coming up next actually we, we've kind of gone over tense we have two minutes left on, on this <laughs> show see you guys then uh and stick around after that for the one-on-one -on -one coaching have a great one aloha